you get them into your house maybe the compound mm. more often than not people have taps outside, outside the their homes, yeah. so you get to that tap you start the washing of the things you take care of you take away the carrier bags mm. you know they are normally put in polythene mm. bags mm. you take that away because that's the carrier that was what was protecting mm. the products the products themselves even on the shelves too were touched by human beings so you wash the products as well you wash them very well with soap that's if it can be washed mm. with soap and under running water mm. those that can't even get into contact with water let's say you have what conflicts a pack of conflicts what do you do you can just take away the outside package and just get the inner one and so that you know that you are fine and that will be the other ones cans and all of that if it's a lithograph can mm -hmm. you can wash it with soap and water and then wipe it with tissue if it's a can with paper you wouldn't want it to be messy so that's one you can sanitize it and ensure that there are no micro organisms there these are with, with what we can do when you finally go home yes but i realized i went to the market last sunday i don't know how my sister coerced me to go to the market with her on saturday and unfortunately i saw this lady buying snail and instead of her taking a snail home to remove from its shell he told the lady to do it for mm -hmm. the hands involved in so like your, your department how are you checking such stuff if you don't take care even a buyer might even just give you the virus or give you contaminated things without you knowing thinking that that's the normal process at the market well, we've done a lot of public education. All of these things are normally consumer driven. Mm. Because if I sell snails, um, I expect you to just take the snails away and all that. But then there are people who tell you, I want them taken out of the shelves mm. because some people they honestly don't know how mm. to go about it. So they take the shelves out and then they pour the liquid, you know, it's a liquid so that will give it a slimy thing. Mm. But t in times like these, I think we should think and think ahead mm. think well and know that if we are taking it getting it um taken out of the shell and the liquid in the mucus in being decanted into a polythene mm. bag what are you taking home yeah can't you just try and do take it out yourself mm. Mm. And do all the necessary mm. things. People who even cut okra, even the snail, is even another thing. That can even, maybe you can say it could go through the process mm. of cooking. Mm. But talk of even people who get the okra cuts mm. for them yeah. into pieces. The okra, when it gets home, is not going to be washed. Mm. You're just going to put all of that and boil that. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's really disheartening when you see some of these things. We are doing a lot of the consumer education because it's not so much as to the market mm. women. We tell the market women. But then since the person is selling, you decide. I mean, it's about market dynamics. Mm. If you can do it for me, then I will buy yours. Buy, yeah. And mm. so if I tell you, no, it's not good. FDA says you shouldn't. It's a consumer that will say, well, if you're just telling me this, then I'm going to the next mm. seller. So we need to be more careful and know that we are not in ordinary times. Mm. We need to be more food safety conscious. So the food can be the carrier. We are now staying at home, that's lockdown. Mm. But then the food that you are bringing in could carry the food. Let's not get the virus moving. Okay. So throw uh, away your carrier bag as soon as you get there. Right. I, I think that this is, is a very good call that the FDA is doing well to champion. That at the end of the day, if human beings are the carriers, we are doing our best to check it. Now, if you don't take care, food will be the next result of carriers that we have to see, we have to curtail it. But so, are there any um, measure or any tips that are there in terms of sequential tips that you need to follow? Like you give it the initial one that we need to do. But are there any rigorous ones that we need to go through it during this period that we are facing this 14 day lockdown? Yes, so when you get, just as I said earlier, you get to the market and then you ensure that even the products that you are taking in are sanitized before you put in your car mm. because you're going to sit in the car as well so if you're going by your own car you ensure that it's done before if it's a public transport then you don't even know what is in already yeah. so you wait you get home and you even do the sanitization or whichever way ensure that before it gets into your kitchen mm. You do the sanitization before mm. years there nothing like that is going into your kitchen and then also another thing is about the storage we have bought a lot of things mm. we all don't want to go mm. out mm. so our freezers are full 
to the brim. Mm. How are we arranging the fence mm. such that the raw food will not contaminate the cooked okay, food? Okay, so the, 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 there should be an arrangement too when it comes to yes, storage. Right? Yes, yes. I think that this, some of this, like, where the tips you sent to us to, you're having some of them on the screens as she's going through it. So, yeah. as and when you see and then look, um, relate with it. So, she's on storage now. Mm -hmm. Yes, so when storing the foods, ensure that the cooked ones are up and about your freezer you may say um, you are doing your granite soup you're doing your palm nut soup you're doing your stew and mm. your contemporary and all of that so you have all of them stored there in the meantime you have some fresh meat there you have some fresh fish poultry mm. they are all there don't think that's well maybe you bought the poultry one kilogram two kilos so they are smaller packs and your food is in a flatter mm. container so you are putting that you may be tempted yeah, to tempted put the, the flat ones yes because you are managing mm. the space mm. and thinking you want to be very prudent with mm. it so you do that and by the time you realize the smaller packs of uh chicken mm. the fish and all of that will be on top of your cooked food exactly. and that is a no-no mm. it should never happen mm. because it can contaminate the wow. food i mean really fresh meat raw meat is just like a corpse mm. that is the reality that is dead animal mm. and it just because we eat it that's where the difference is when you should bear in mind that they bear their own microorganisms mm. too and these microorganisms will contaminate the cooked food and the cooked food we cook the food to ensure that the microorganisms have been dealt with mm. they've been eliminated totally and so if they are not there you've done the cooking you've used all the energy be it a coal pot a gas cooker electricity you've used all that energy mm. and your time mm. to cook it and you go and you get it re um, contaminated mm. what's the point Mm. So please ensure that the uncooked ones, the raw ones, are down there, or even separated. If you can it's demarcate too, right. okay. your deep freezer, you have one side of it, and then the cooked ones. You know, most deep freezers come with baskets, mm. but a lot of people do throw them away because they just um, occupy space. Mm. So people really, the reality is that people don't use them. Mm. But these baskets could have held the cooked food, food. so that yes. the raw ones can be, be down. Them. Yes, okay. and let's say you have some butter in there and all of that too you ensure that then you just take the butter and just put mm. it on your bread mm. Mm. you spread mm. it there so these are not going to be cooked and so in the fridge as well you make sure that the raw ones let's say your tomatoes your um, green pepper and all of that are down there and then your cooked food is up there speaking and on, on, on fridge, storage one, one thing is that i realize that most homes um right after they are done preparing the food in the saucepan they put it there for the saucepan to get cold or the warmness to come down a bit. Then they carry the whole saucepan into the, the, the freezer or refrigerator. Is that safe at all? It's bad. That was what we were taught by our mothers, mm -hmm. grandmothers, and all of that. Gone are the days that they said, when you finish cooking, let the food cool before mm. you put in the no. That's not it. If you really do understand microbiology mm. or you understand how the microorganisms work, you will know that if you leave the food at ambient temperature, then you're just creating the right environment for them. Mm. A very conducive atmosphere for them to grow mm. and multiply mm. and then produce toxins, which will, mm. at the end of the day, give mm. you foodborne illnesses. So as soon as you finish the cooking mm -hmm. just pack them in storage containers okay small small ones if i have a family of four or a family of five i know a container that can take maybe my palm nut soup mm. for one day one day so my lunch is that you take it and you do that you package well, let's say if your palmer scoop is going to last for maybe five dinners or all of that you put them there you do your consumer and all of that invest and put put it in the storage containers mm -hmm. so when you get it whilst it's really hot then you start packing them in your deep freezer the ones you are not going to use let's say the next day mm -hmm. or a day or two the fridge should take care of things that are going to last for a day or two, or two right. for the long lasting one well there's a lockdown mm -hmm. a 14 day thing so so we are talking of deep freezers. Mm. You put it in there. Whilst they are still hot. Whilst they are still hot. Mm. In days past, they said when you put it in and it's hot, you're going to spoil the fridge. Yeah. You are talking about people doing it in the full saucepan. Mm -hmm. You know, that mm -hmm. is a big mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. No, it's big. 
it's a huge thing you're going to put it in there the difference already has some things and it's already cooled mm. and all of that. when you put that hot one in it's going to exchange heat equilibrium is going to take mm. place i mean really and then the things in there already are even going to get warm before mm. that, that hour will to exactly. attain some mm. um cold Level temperature cold. exactly and that is going to be mm. that's not really good so mm. when they are smaller you can get rapid cooling mm. uh, very rapid because they are smaller and smaller and the larger surface area and all of that mm. so you do that and quickly it can get the right temperature and the advantage too is that you, when you are ready to eat, you don't take all of that out of your mm. freezer or fridge and then you put it down for it to thaw. And when you are done with your lunch, you take it back into mm. the freezer mm. because you did maybe you did all of that, you just took one fifth, they go back. Then the next time you come, then um, two fifth has gone through fifth. about mm. five times, it goes in and out, out of it. Yeah. And it's just sitting there, you just cook a little and you cook all. Are you just going to put all of it on the mm. pan? Mm. It doesn't work that mm. way. No, it's better storing and taking. You can even label the things. Uh, labels you can put mm. on because maybe they all have blue tops, they all have green tops. Yeah. So this one is my contumery. This is that. We can do it orderly and that will and that's be fine. fine. Right. Finally, uh, this goes to we the consumers on how we, we can prevent spreading the virus, taking the virus from the mind. So what, final one, what do you have for the food vendors out there too? Everybody should be very careful. Mm. Yes, there is a lockdown. However, because they are food vendors, they have the liberty to go out there and sell. They should take care of themselves. They should sanitize everything. I saw a woman sanitizing some money on mm, Facebook. Mm, mm. And I thought it was interesting. Mm, People mm, were rather... Mm. And you see, that's a typical con mm. Ghanaian for us. They were going like, hey, look at this. Is it ignorance? Is it really ignorance? We, the we, one we, commenting we, rather we, so... I remember commenting... Ignorant. At the end of it, because we realized that even exchange of money and even coins. Exactly. And I was impressed. This was somebody who looked quite illiterate, mm. just sprinkling the thing and all that. She was accepting and sprinkling and just mixing the money. That's it. Once you receive it, you just do it. People might think you are just being a bit too much and being careful. Yes, we all do believe in God. We trust God that God is going to take care of this. But we have a role to play. Mm. And the role is being careful. We all need to be careful. As food vendors, they need to be careful. Mm. Even when they are speaking, we all speak and then drop that. Do it come happens. out? Yes. Mm. That's why they are just advocating that we all wear the mask. Max, okay. Food vendors out there wear the mask. Because you, as a person, one CD, two CD, it will drop mm. in there. And I think people should also be aware of the fact that the COVID-19 has that asymptomatic thing to There are people who will be carrying, mm. but will not show sure symptoms. Yeah. So the fact that the person is not coughing, sneezing, and down with that, does not mean that the person is um, coronavirus negative mm. or COVID really mm. it might not knock the person down it's about viruses mm. so everybody is a potential career Carrier. and you yourself too you are a potential mm. career mm. and you wouldn't want to worsen the situation for anyone so whilst giving the food while serving the food whilst cooking mm. in times past it was a taboo yeah. to be talking whilst cooking mm -hmm. especially pounding for food mm. With time, people do it, they talk and all that. When you are cooking, you don't speak. Especially Fufu. I mean, Fufu, with Fufu, they come with all sorts of things that will scare people. Scare people yeah. That uh, when you are doing, when you, are, you, fit, you mm. talk, that's what will happen mm. to you. Mm. But it's all for food safety reasons. Our grandmothers knew food safety, but maybe they didn't know I'll what pen it to exactly, or what, exactly, what, was what exactly, what exactly, but they knew that really, you didn't have to talk when cooking. So nobody should speak or cough. Coughing and sneezing are involuntary actions, mm -hmm. actually. But as soon as they happen, you carry your sanitizer with you. And especially because you are cooking out in a kitchen, you have your water and your running water and soup. So you do it. Those who happen to be doing it outside somewhere and may not have access to water, then you quickly sanitize your hands. Right. But as much as possible, one thing is that Washing our hands with soap and, and under running water is very important. important. We, should, we do it so many times. We only use sanitizers when we do not have access to True. soap and running, running water. water. Advice will take it. Like what Aunt Mary is saying, we should do well to 
wash our hands and the running water a lot and then to the food vendors out there learn to cover your your, your nose and mask because at the end of the day, time we speak the particles will come up and for covering the season to like she said mention mention of this is voluntary you can't call for it at the end you just be there and you feel like sneezing like some people just perceive a strong odor and then do sneeze allergies make somebody sneeze allergies make somebody cough so please just to be on the on the safer side let's use the face mask and to we the consumers are when you go to the market and you're buying your you are shopping for groceries like she's advised do well to wash them even before you enter the kitchen and then when the food is finally ready to be careful on how you store them be careful the cooked ones should be on top and on cooked ones you go down there please let's take this advice seriously so i had with me the head of food enforcement at the fda and the person of miss maria evelyn's johnson thanks for coming mom thank and see you. you next time and then okay. stay safe thank right. you stay safe as well stay safe out there too you're still watching am Ghana. it is where we call it a day and thanks for watching thanks for staying up from seven o'clock am with the now team grandma i'm crab with the news there tomorrow should come same time too and also come with the way what, what friday is what the five of the lockdown is going to present to us. Have a good morning.